Hello, Facebook and YouTube fans of DX Engineering. It is Thursday afternoon. We're going to be talking about the manufacturer showcase today. And today we have on one of our manufacturers from Kiwi SDR. It is Peter Munn, Zulu Lima 2 Papa from New Zealand, live from New Zealand. Peter, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. It's a lovely sunny Friday morning here. Great. And uh, thank you so much, Peter, for being on the show today. Um, let's talk about SDRs. Let's talk about the Kiwi SDR, Peter, and tell us how this all came about. Okay. So about 10 years ago, John Siemens, the inventor of the Kiwi SDR, he's an American who lives here in New Zealand. Um, he came up with the idea to do an SDR that's a bit different. The main difference is that it's um, visible from anywhere on the planet it, um, and it can share four users at the same time who can all tune independently across the, um, the 0 to 30 megs. So, um, so that's the difference. And the big point of difference is that he uses a reverse proxy server, uh, which probably doesn't mean much to most people, but what it means is that you do not need a fixed IP address at your house, which is getting increasingly difficult for people to get I mean, like I use Starlink out of my farm, and, um, and you can't get a static IP address with Starlink. So the nice thing with this is the Kiwi SDR talks to a server that John Siemens runs, rents a cloud server in the States, and so when you connect to it, you're actually connecting through the cloud server. So you don't have to worry about port mapping and all sorts of complicated things. In fact, we've got it so that when a person buys one, they can take it out of the box, connect the power and antenna and an ethernet cable and it's online instantly. You can change it later on to put your own call sign for the name of it, but to start with, out of the box they work by serial number dot proxy dot Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes uh, great sense. And, and talk about, uh, uh, do you see the uh, PC board here on the screen, Peter? Sure, yes I do, yes. <clears throat> All right, what, why don't you uh, tell everybody what we're looking at here on the screen. Okay, so that is that is a circuit board that plugs into a BeagleBone green inside the case. And so they're called a cape. On, on pies, they're called a hat on raspberry pies, but on beagles, they're called a cape. So that cape has in it, it has an analog to digital converter, it has some front end stuff to filter out things, and then it's got a large um, field programmable gate array that does all the logic. So all the waterfall, the, the whole band and everything is done inside that FPGA. You don't need a PC at all, nothing. You just plug this in, <clears throat> no PC. And so it's very attractive for guys who want to put them on a hilltop somewhere. They don't need to keep a PC running up on the hill. And uh, so let's talk about the ports uh, on the left-hand side, Peter. Uh, what are the three SMA connectors? Okay, one is your antenna in. One is a GPS antenna. We supply a GPS antenna with this. You don't have to use that, but with the GPS antenna, um, it corrects the frequency and brings it in really nice and tight. If you don't have a GPS antenna, you could be 100 hertz off. Not a big deal, but I mean, it's nice. Um, and the other connector is an external clock, and that allows you, we supply a little test cable with this, so you can actually turn the cape into a signal generator for testing the radio. It's a kind of an internal test. Oh, the GPS, you need the GPS if you're going to use TDOA. TDOA is a special feature of Kiwis, which is time difference of arrival. So you can connect to several, to two Kiwi SDRs at the same time. And because GPS timing is very, very precise, it will then produce a map and show you where the signal's coming from. And so people use that to try and you know find a ham who's being a nuisance you know generating intentional qrm or something you can very clearly see where it's coming from but that's a special feature that you have to use the proxy server and you have to have the gps for that all right and and then this photo here peter talk about these uh uh parts that come with well, that's just <clears throat> that's just the gp that's the active gps antenna <clears throat> there's a, a little micro sd card in there which you don't use but it's a backup. It kind of helps you to reflash it. If something goes very wrong, you can just put that in and power it up and it will restore it back to factory default. And the other one's just the little test cable that is, is used to turn the device into a self-testing signal generator. 
Okay, so uh, it, in a very nice box, and it says it needs uh, plus five volts. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. Now, <clears throat> five volts <clears throat> needs to be clean, <clears throat> and so um, that's a bit of a problem for some guys because they just get a USB power supply, and, and it's not designed for radio use, and it's quite can be quite noisy. So you get birdies every 60 kilohertz all the way up through the band. So we offer as a little extra a cable that goes from USB to the 5 volt plug. And we've found over time that there's a very, very low noise um, power supply that people can often get for free because all the early iPhones, they've now gone to USB-C. But right up until a couple of years ago, they all came with a free USB um, power supply and Apple has done a stunning job at getting the noise down because, of course, there's multiple receivers inside an iPhone. There's US, uh, sorry, there's Wi-Fi, cellular, Bluetooth, um, UFC for um, you know PayWave and that sort of stuff. So Apple's done a really, really good job. Whereas most cheap Chinese USB power supplies are rubbish. Right, right. So um, it, you know that 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 makes it. Uh... Very nice to use the Apple supplies. Let's talk about um, some of the things that you can do. Um, I know a lot of people use the DX Engineering uh, Active Vertical, but what kind of antennas do you recommend uh, should be used with the Kiwi SDR? Well, <clears throat> to be honest, one of the best antennas is just an 80 meter dipole because it, um, you don't need a stunning match for a receiver. You, you mostly notice a bad match when you're transmitting. So we found that an inverted V or a dipole on 80 meters will give you very, very good coverage from all the way from medium wave right up to, um, to, uh, you know, to 10 meters. And, and uh, let's talk about uh, the browsers that are supported with the Kiwi SDR uh, from yeah. Firefox, et cetera. <clears throat> Every browser, we, I've, I've not found a browser that doesn't work, yeah, because it's, it's using the um, JavaScript, which all modern browsers have built in. So it downloads JavaScript to your browser, and then the JavaScript in, turns it and does all the nice things with the waterfall and the band scope and that kind of thing. Right. So um, one of the things uh, that, that is impressive is the small size, obviously, um, and back to the uh, power supply there for a second, Peter. Uh, you need it needs 1.5 amperes. That's no, a lot of no, five volts. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It needs. It, they. <clears throat> I've got multiple at home, and they're generally running about 700 milliamps. So um, okay. I think I'm not sure. Maybe I need to change that. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's a bit high. <laughs> um, the Apple supplies are typically five volts, one and a half amps. So that's probably where that came from. Okay. Very good. And uh, of course, the frequency coverage all the way down to 10 kilohertz. Yeah, so some guys use it for listening to Loran. I don't know what they can decode from that, you know, the submarine radio and all sorts of stuff way down very low. Yeah, and uh, there are uh, a couple of reviews, uh, 5.0, which is great. Um, and and uh, so anybody that is interested in learning more about the Kiwi SDR, uh, these reviews can help you uh, make decisions. And, of course, uh, what uh, Peter is talking about with antennas, et cetera. So lots of, uh, of really positive things here with the Kiwi SDR. And if you have uh, any questions, Peter is the guy here to uh, answer them. And let me just check the, um, uh, the <clears throat> in the chat room. We don't have any questions, Peter. But um, let's talk about... Uh, uh, what's next? What what kind of uh, SDR receivers are you guys working on, and what what might might we see in the future from Kiwi? Okay, so before we go there, just to, the the Kiwi SDR has lots of converters in it, so it will decode FT4, FT8, Whisper, HFDL, which is what the um, passenger airlines use for sending their data. So you can see. Tons of stuff. It's got a CW decoder in there. It's got all of that. But people keep asking for more, more decoders for newer things. Um, it does DRM, which is is that, oh, actually uh, until I got involved with John on this project, I did not realise there are still lots of people who do shortwave listening. 
I'm, I'm a ham, so I'm in that world, you know, but there is still a group of people around the world who are mad passionate about shortwave listening. So DRM is, is often used now on shortwave stations, digital, radio, Mondi, I think it stands for. Um, <clears throat> so people ask for more features. They'd like more channels. Um, at the moment, it can connect. you can connect four people to your Kiwi at home at the same time, and they, they, it's, to them it looks like they've got four totally independent receivers, nothing to do with each other. Well, people would like to have eight or 12 or whatever channels, so that's another option. Um, but really, it's incredibly functional the way it is. Um, we've been hit badly with tariffs. Our sales died once the US tariffs came in. So, um, but they're picking up again now because we found for some reason our radios, the last four, four, out of the last five we sent to the States, four of them got through without a tariff, you know. So, um, but people can buy them direct from you and, and there's no tariffs that way. When, when you, but then if, when you buy more from us, you'll, you'll be hit with the 50. New Zealand's got a 15% tariff on it at the moment, but it's a constantly changing um, target, isn't it? Right, right, every, every day. One of the questions, uh, our friend Joe, K0NEB, said, does it come with Beagle Bone? Yes, yes, the Beagle, the beagle is in there. So the Beagle, so <clears throat> um, if you, um, can you flick, oh, you can see me here anyway. So, so I've lifted the lid off the one on my desk here, and that on the top is the Beagle Bone, and underneath it is that cape. Right, so you're seeing that there. So they yeah. sit on top of they sit on they just sit on top of each other. But that all comes with it. It's out of the box, plug and play. Nice, very nice, Peter. Well, it is certainly a, a great product. We're very very happy uh, to be supporting this product here at DX Engineering, and uh, you know we're going to continue to uh, work with you and John to make sure that we have the latest and greatest on the shelf and uh, for our customers and certainly for SDR enthusiasts. And uh, it's been a real joy having you on the show today. Thanks so much, Peter. Thank you very much for having us. Okay. And uh, okay. thanks to all of you for watching. I hope you learn more about Kiwi SDR. Just go to the DX Engineering website, type in Kiwi SDR, and uh, you, you will have all the information you need. You can always ask us questions, and uh, Peter is available for support as well. Until next time, 73 from DX Engineering. Yeah, 73. Bye-bye.